Marvin, who's in charge today? That a boy? You get to decide when the presiding's not here. If I was in charge, we wouldn't be. Just today or in general? Today. <laughs> hey, uh, he put you in charge. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Since you shaved for us and everything. Oh, yeah. They don't recognize you. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't know. I was kind of scared of you there for a while. You look like Grizzly Adams, man. I thought you'd bring a bear to work with you or something. And... Okay, so we'll call this mission to order. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if we have any announcements. We can skip that. Accounts payable review. Did you look over the... Yeah, I did look over them. I put those on your desk. Did you, uh... I thumbed through them real quick. There's a... I'm making motion to pay accounts payable. Second. Um, the only thing that I had was uh, that one. Yeah. Yeah, that was one that you talked about. We pulled that one out before, so. Yeah, it was in last month, so. Uh, all those in favor of accounts payable? So aye, aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we'll pay the bills this month. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get mine out. In the health department, electronic medical record system discussion. And that's for you. All right. Pictures? Second page is picture. Okay, how much have we paid them and how much do we still owe NetSmart? Um, I don't know how much we pay them. Once they put those credits that they owe us, we'll owe them about $16,000. Is Jill here? No, she's not going to be here today. Is this? I think we pay them about $17,000. Of? Um, so are they in breach of contract for failure, failure to perform or? But I thought she said it was really there was no breach that could be proved proven. I think the deal is it's going to be it's just not going to work is the bottom line, and it's just a decision. It had to be a decision on our part 
to walk away from it uh, with what we've invested in. I mean, they did invest in a lot of time too, but if it's not going to do the job, I think that was a discussion. It's just not worth sticking with. And if the overall turf is going to be less expensive, then that would be, I mean, that, that was the other, the rest of it. But I don't think that Jill had come up with any breach uh, for the contract. So, so do we already have this all tier software? Yes, we have it. It needs to be upgraded, which they'll do for free. There's a few other charges, I'd like to get it connected to the state's show me back system so we can do um, send the immunization records. You know, there's a few small fees, but we have all tier now. That's what they have been using for a number of years. And is yeah, that? Chris, I don't know if you remember. Oh, I don't know if you remember. I don't think he was here when this all happened. Yeah, the deal was all tier. All, originally was not going to upgrade anything and, yep. uh, they were just stuck in old technology they were going to close the doors on it one day or anything and make it work so the uh, that's when we went out with the rfp to get something that would be newer mm -hmm. and at least get us to new platforms and stuff uh and the rfp resulted in one respondent and that's insight uh, and in the meantime after this is all rolled out and altair has gotten moving forward again so they're you know they, they'll support anything that we need to be doing okay just all windows based all tier stuff yes, okay newer windows i mean windows seven eight whatever i mean the latest technology that the original all tier did not do so uh, what do you need from us today then to decide well, to say okay. um <clears throat> have you seen the new all tier stuff yep, and it does does everything that you want them to want us to want it to do? Altier currently works for us really well. It, the only hiccup at that point was the the lack of them not continuing, but they are now and it works really well for our our customers. And the improvements they made to the upgrade will enhance our our services. And do other health departments use Altier or? What guarantees do we have from Altier that their demo is going to be actually what we get? I mean, you, you understand my concern. Yeah. We never had problems with it before. Yeah, we never the had reason problems. we were even looking at some difference because Altier said, we're done, we're going to quit doing this in a year, and, uh, and too bad. This is an example, was it last week or the week before, the clinic was all backed up because when people came in for one immunization charge, it was adding all these other charges to the nurse were having to go back into that smart and take the other charges off before people could get checked out. And it's, it's costing us a lot more time because it just doesn't work. <laughs> Okay. So roughly, we're going to save one hundred and thirty thousand dollars on over six years. Yes. Or I guess not save, but not spend. Well, we've had a good relationship with them before. They've always worked. Just. I think the other thing, though, is Altier was actually purchased, I think, by a different group. Of yeah. Or something. Yes. So the CGM now is what owns it. So it's not, I mean, when we're saying Altier, it's really not them. It's, it's CGM. So are you, are you good with Altier software? I, I, I mean, to me, well, I would say it's a no brainer. It, it, you always. If you have what's working, you'd like to keep on with it. And they just had a rough patch where the original computer <coughs> was not, it was <coughs> having problems that they weren't supporting it and stuff. And I think, and they don't, I, you know, yeah, don't we know this, but we think they got past that point now. And they're actually supporting their product again and, and being progressive. And they're, I mean, they're, the whole office is familiar with it. So 
unless there's a major, major change in it, it's what they've been using for many years now. So it's got to be more productive for them to be using that that existing system versus what they've got now, which is well, totally the system different. is just not consistent throughout the whole thing. And so learning a new system is not a bad thing. We could learn that. But when it's not consistent and we are just spending so much staff time going over it, and then one time you do one thing and it works, and next time you do something, it's the same exact thing and it doesn't. So it's just learning new systems is, but this all here, it serves a purpose for the medical record. You know, if we need to print out a medical record to give to somebody to take to a PCP, they could do it. This medical record in NetSmart, Dr. K would said it would work for him. His purpose is it would be okay. He could get by with it. But if we were actually going to print it out to give to a client to take to a PCP, let's say they get it her own <coughs> provider, not it would really be useless for them. They would, you would not be able to really understand. He knows what we're doing, so he can tell and tell, but it would not really be a very helpful record for a client okay. to give a PCP. And Altier will have ability to do electronic medical records and all they that stuff. All along. Okay. We've been able to print okay. it out all along. So I moved to sever the contract with NetSmart and upgrade with to Altier. So is that what we need to do? All right. I'll second it. And if we get any bills from them, make sure you pull them out. I'll try to watch for it too, but I'm. Yeah, the last one we paid, we um, had to pay it because it was paying for the visit that they had came here. It was their expenses when they had a staff person come here on site and we would, we would go live. That's the only reason. So, <clears throat> um, so. Debbie showed that we had paid them seventy three thousand dollars and we still owed them sixteen thousand dollars. So and then you're you're showing a credit here. Actually I only took the ten thousand dollars as a credit because we only paid the ten thousand dollars. Um but if you're saying twenty well the 20, it was twenty thousand dollars total. Yes. And we paid them ten Is that this so the or statement I got it's from the them conversion. still showed that ten thousand balance. So when they take the ten thousand credit off and the ten thousand Make it We're not going to pay them the sixteen thousand. Is that correct? The worst case scenario is they want a lawsuit. We have to. Worst case scenario, if they want to trust you. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's up to Jill. So I would amend my motion to say that we will not pay NetSmart any further uh, monies, and they can come after us for for any damages there and after the credits have been issued. So, um, and we will still sever the, sever the contract and enter a contract without here. So. And I'll second the amended one. Did you run out of room on your paper? Write that on. <laughs> Um, do we have to vote on that, or is this just a... Yeah, we'll have to vote on it. Okay. But that's what I was wondering, if y'all just needed direction to move on with Altier, or if we just had to quit paying what's-her-names. And... Okay. I mean, and you'll have to get us an agreement with Altier, <clears throat> and then we'll have to vote on that again. So. They sent us a proposal yesterday, but has some extra stuff on there we don't need. So okay. we'll have them revise it and bring that back to you. Should we call roll? Chris? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Mark's absent. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, it's good that we can save that kind of money over six years, too. So, maintenance agreements are kind of a pain. So, um, next on the agenda is the signing of the agreement with the Nun Company. Coming up, and I've got to have a certified general appraiser. 
Okay. Do we have to put RFPs or RFQs out for that kind of stuff, or is that just? Professional service, you do not. Okay. It's under, it's under $4,000. And it, it's just not to exceed 4000 and then if it, the only thing that I looked at. Okay. The only thing that I read in here, the work canceled upon mutual agreement prior to the completion of the report will be billed in accordance with professional time and expenses incurred. So I assume that if something happened prior to completing the report that they would just bill it out as an hourly rate yeah, if the, uh, up, up to that four thousand dollars right okay i'm okay with this did you read through that jeff yeah i moved to accept the proposal from none company i'll second all those in favor say it all right we got to vote on that too. contract or? It's a contract. okay it's call roll chris yes Yes. Contracts approved. Um, we got to sign this, Jeff. Sorry, two copies, Debbie. Okay, next on things. Next thing on the agenda is a discussion of intrinsic core invoice. Um, I believe this had to do with the, the error that occurred um, on the tax bill um, that was sent out. There so. was discussion. We did get an invoice from Chris to pay the remaining part of the uh, personal property side of this new software system. And I guess my question to you guys was because we had um, expenses that happened because of this software, maybe the way I understand it, of over eight thousand dollars. I was just asking if you wanted that credit to be taken off of this payment on the personal property side. I'll let anybody, Chris, do you want? To So far, I think there have been an additional at least 5000 spent on modifications that we made to the scanning program. I don't know if you have any others at this time that you want to mention. Uh, no. It's been that so far. Well, we're, we're making quite a few customization. Right. We had agreed that you know, we would have a personalized, customized system. And it would be up to at least what we had before. Now, I believe under the contract, anything over and above that would have to be covered by their regular hour, regular hourly rate. I believe that's the way the contract reads. Yeah, <coughs> our internal costs on these modifications exceed five thousand dollars. So we got a functional system now? Personal property, yes. Okay. Larry? Well, I, are, are you, I mean, are there any major issues or any minor issues for that matter that, that have not been handled to this point? I mean, hmm. they said we have to work together on this, and part of the agreement was that, you know, the two systems would, would mesh. You know, well, the agreement was all on uh, as long as we have a bridge, and is that bridge working? It's not 100% or? yet, and it's not but we're getting there. Necessarily intrinsic course for <coughs> we're not going backwards. To do also, optimally, <coughs> from a 
system to be good for personal property, we both need to be on the same system. And that, I'm not saying that needs to be intrinsic or DevNet or whoever, that we should be on the same system. Yeah, but we want There's going to be issues with the bridge, in my opinion, and there's no way around that unless we get on the same system. Well, there was problems with us being on the same system to start with. And neither one of you wanted DevNet, or both wanted DevNet, both wanted Transicorp. And so the agreement was, as long as y'all can get a bridge done, let's do it. So if we're still getting it done, I mean, let's keep moving. What, I mean, what was the question today? What are we talking about? This well, the question was, is who, who made the error that cost us $8,600 um, to resend out the... I can speak to that. Okay. It wasn't necessarily an error. <clears throat> the, um, the assessor's office is in the state of Missouri, and they use a, a vehicle guide that's put out it's based on the native values. It's produced um, under contract to the assessor's association. Cole County has been using this guide as well as all the other counties in Missouri. In their original data system, uh, all of their, well, I should also mention, this guide has about 40,000 items listed. And it, everything from boats to motorcycles to cars to trucks. Uh, each item has an ID, a six-digit code, that the assessor places on their file and associated with that ID is a, is a vehicle description and a set of values depending on the age of the vehicle. Uh, during conversion, <coughs> I noticed that their data from their original system, all of their vehicles did have a state ID uh, associated with them and the values uh, corresponded to the table uh, that the assessor's office put out. However, the descriptions on the vehicles, in some cases, did not match what was on the guide. It was my understanding that we were going to make these vehicle descriptions consistent with the guide. And that is what I did. What happened then is when the bills went out, what was discovered is that in the old system, sometimes they would pick an item off the guide and yet put a totally different description. Their old system allowed them to override the description that was on the guide. And so this caused um, description differences on what they used to have compared to what the guide said. Now, I went through all these differences, and most of them were very minimal. They would be things like a difference between Ford Mustang and Ford Mustang two-door, things like this, very minimal. Uh, most of the differences were very minor. There was some, however, that were uh, pretty bad. <coughs> and so my initial response was, let's let me go through all of these and figure out which ones are, are bad and fix those. However, that was not my decision. The decision was made, made to, no, no, my to make all of them back to what they were. Yeah. And the problem is, whatever prints out from our system, if it doesn't exactly match what Department of Revenue has, you don't get your tax. Well, yeah, that, this is true. Generally speaking. But the Department of Revenue would have accepted it, whether it said Ford Mustang or Ford Mustang. Well, that's true. For that, for that minor item, something like that, yes. But we still wanted it to be exactly as it was, as it was and consistent. And so I, I did have a record showing what all item descriptions were before and after <coughs> this change, so I changed them all back to what they had, whether or not they matched the state guide, <coughs> and that necessitated them Providing the file to Larry so that he could update his bill file. So I don't know that there was actually a mistake. It was just, you know, the way it How was entered. Stuff. Yeah. Now, we've since come up with a method to, to 
work with this into the future to gradually start correcting these things so that they will be consistent with the state guide. So did the so it was just the description that was wrong on the assessment form or it was the amount that was wrong? The amounts were all correct. The amounts okay. were correct. Okay. The description was different. Okay. And and it was because the description on the item did not match what was on the state guide. Okay. And what I'm hearing because of the extra expense that you guys did some extra features and that you're not charging for for the scanning. That's correct. Is there any kind of agreement or written agreement? We know, I think it was just a, a verbal agreement at this point because of the, I guess, the length and breadth we're going to customize this system. You know, so we have exactly what we need, which will basically be different than most everybody else in the state because it is so specific. You know, we, we have kept the state tax commission has stated to me that, that we have with our real estate and our computer programs we have <coughs> some of the best programs in the state the top four in the entire state and one of the things that we wanted to guarantee with this change is that we would maintain that high level of quality with the programs that we would be changing to we didn't need to change our programs we were working fine, but you know, to get to the, the Windows base, away from the AS400, and to work better with the collector, we went ahead and changed. So that's where we're at. Okay. And the personal property is good to go, and for too much longer, with some tears and gnashing of teeth, I think we'll start on real estate. I've already started that. Uh, most of the tears and national teeth will be with my appraisers. <laughs> so how much uh, additional money are we going to be spending on, on customization above and beyond the original contract? I've, I've already done considerable customization and have not built any, and I don't anticipate a whole lot more. Okay. I've, I've pretty much covered everything that they asked me to do. There's a few small items that I'm still working on. Um, this, the process to eventually get their vehicle descriptions to match the state guide. I, I'm working on that. I don't anticipate building anything for that. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, uh, do you work by yourself? or? or no, I, I work with, well, <clears throat> my background, I, I've been an independent contractor mm -hmm. with Cole County for 20 something years um, but I work with intrinsic court mm -hmm. so my function in the assessor's office now is a, a contractor sure I, I guess my question is is um, it seems like you're working on this solely kind of by yourself and so I mean Barring something would happen to you, is there someone else that could could maintain and write new yeah. software for this and, and do all that stuff? I'm, I'm the main program sure. developer on the first sure. property. You know, our real estate program, I'm not. Mm -hmm. But I'm definitely okay. in on the design. Okay. Uh, but we have support other programmers. Okay. I'm just doing the initial development. Okay, great. You got any questions? Can I ask one question? The subscription fee versus maintenance, is that, uh, what's the difference? Do we own it, we don't own it? I guess I don't understand. Just being a, a subscription fee versus. Well, first of all, no one owns software. Okay. You don't any, own any of the software that you use. You have a license. And there were two methods of paying for that license, either a large amount up front or spread over a five or six year period. As a subscription fee. The subscription includes maintenance. It does include maintenance. Yes. And I guess, is that a how many year minimum contract? I believe in your case it's five years. Five is what we can Okay. And is this all Windows based or is it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was 
one of the, the major reasons for us changing was to get in the window space. Okay. And then I assume after the end of five years that as Windows updates and new versions of Windows come out that you guys will continue to upgrade and, and go to those newer operating systems? We upgrade continually. Okay. And, and provide all our clients with the upgrades. It's not additional <coughs> as we add features to everywhere. You got anything else, Jeff? No. <coughs> What do you want? I'm tired of this whole damn thing. <coughs> it's been like two or three years we've been wrestling with it. So just, the less we talk about it, the better for that's me. That's fine. You want it? <laughs> what you do we need to do? Pay this eight thousand dollars. Actually, the fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. If I mean, if Chris agrees that it was really an unforeseen thing, I mean, I'm familiar with that stuff. I do a lot of remodeling, and you get into stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I don't I can, like it. I can tell you that, that Dave spent an awful lot of hours down here with us on a regular basis getting this worked out. Well, let's so move on then. Done, you know, once we discovered the error, it was corrected pretty doggone quick. And, you know, we didn't get billed for a whole bunch of extra stuff. So, Debbie, I see this as two different things. You've got... Um, this is more of a bill for the annual subscription and something else. And then what about this eight thousand six hundred and sixty five dollars? Those bills have already been paid. They okay. were paid to several vendors. Um, Central Bank for resending them, brown printing for resending Okay. Them. So those have already been approved. Yes. Okay. I was just wondering. Okay. Good with paying the bill? Yeah, I mean we got to. Okay. No contractor for it, right? So th this needs to be anything. this needs to be approved so we yes. can pay this. Yes, please. That's not part of. I do not have it in there for this run. No, I was waiting until after today. So we just need to approve it and put it with these, and you can I run it today. We can run it today. All right, I'll make motion to approve it. Okay, I'll second. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, bill's been paid. So, yep. Thank you, Chris. Thank. You Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys for coming in. Thank Appreciate you. it. Debbie, you got anything else? No. And I mentioned to her that you had texted me this morning yeah. asking about it. So yeah. she wanted to pull that up. I don't know if you were familiar with what authority we do have. or. Don't well, I, have. I figured it was up to <laughs> us to to make that decision. So um, It gives the employees that are non-essential the opportunity to stay home, but they do have to use their vacation or uh, vacation or comp time. Why couldn't they do it anyway? We don't have to call an emergency. They can just call and say, hey, my kids are... Off school day, I don't have anybody else to take care of them, or I'm snowed in, I can't make it to work. What are we going to do, fire them? Well, you do have some dedicated people who will come, and they probably shouldn't come. Why shouldn't they? <laughs> if you can make it, why not? But if the state is calling it that, and the city oh my wants God. to the road. I think everybody that doesn't like this weather ought to move to Wisconsin or somewhere like that for about one winter. So if they... And you that or wear different panties so they're not getting all in a bunch. Because, you, you know, you got to take care of your. Why did MU call off school day? Huh? The what? safety of the kids. The safety what? of your employees. Why there ain't no they safety. There's been ice that's been worse than what we're going to get in snow. And it ain't going to be here until later this afternoon. That's a bunch of Nancy's. Well, I did talk to Ben uh, before I came in, and, and he did say that we were going to. Uh, probably be seeing some bad conditions late this afternoon and and uh anyway um i'm gonna be playing in it so i might drive columbia just for fun i i would like i would like to see us close county offices at noon and send all non-essential employees home
Well, and I, I think it's important for us as a whole to try to do things as a whole. And I mean, you can do whatever you want, Marvin, I, and that's that's your prerogative. Uh, but uh, just just from talking to Larry Benz, the conditions could get worse the later as the day goes on, and and so. So when you close today, are they taking annual leave for the afternoon then, or are they just getting a day off? I'm just asking. Good you can do whatever you want to. Your elected official, it's your office. You can do what you want to with it. Uh, you know whether I agree or disagree. I mean, I I'm just. We're on about six inch total at the most. But the roads and stuff, the highways, if you look, <coughs> MoDOT's already got highways that are closed. Well, I don't think it's fair for some people to have to take annual leave and other people just get the day off. And I don't think people should just get a day off because it snowed. There's work to be done, it's a service, so. I'm not inclined to close it up. We had worse weather when we had the ice. Well, I, I agree. So I agree. But like I told you earlier, you know, a lot of times you don't see this come during the day. It, a lot of times it'll come at night. Um, I mean, it. If people want to take leave, I I'd say let them go home early, um, and that's basically what that that allows them to do, right? Sick time. Sick. Can you use sick time? I'm not sick. Or that, if you close the building. Can you use sick for that? If you close the building, then it's vacation or They can fake a cough. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not real, I don't know, sympathetic on along this. It's. I, I understand. I mean, I'm I'm out in it, so I I understand a little bit more. And and when I see some of these conditions, when Modot's got trucks and the medians and different things, I mean, it's uh, they just can't get to it that quick. And and uh, anyway, the conditions were were bad the other day, and I knew a gentleman that died. And so anyway, it's just I think we I think we err on the side of caution. I heard last that with the ice that we had the other day, we had three. We had Cole County had three uh, trucks in the ditch, so it's not going to be any better today. And you know, what's that going to matter if we close the offices though? Well, if That's they put them in the ditch, they can't clean the road. So I'd say if we sent people home, at least they're getting home early enough with daylight. And right now, before it really gets bad. Because if they wait till 4:30 when they get off, it's supposed to be. That's when it's supposed to be the worst time, Jeff. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't agree with I'm you. I'm sorry too. We can disagree on it. It's I, uh, well, the, I, the other the, I even disagree on it. So. The other thing I mean, is, we yep. have closed in the past when the weather has been bad. It's not what you're doing is not setting setting a precedent because we have. I'm not worried about up. setting a precedent on it. If I was really concerned that it was a safety issue. Uh, we got people like Debbie from Russellville that's going to be harder for her to get in and out of her road because they don't hit her road. The well, state doesn't hit their I road got, until. I, got a staff member too. <coughs> have a I mean, and that's if they know it's going to be rough, then they should have just called in. They said, I'm not even going to go out in this stuff. Why should I? Because I'll be trapped in town then. I'm going to get out in it. I'll be able to go today, and it's not even going to slow me down. I'm going to get just as much work done. The, uh, you know, talking to Larry as well, you know, when you do get a rush of people trying to leave at, at four o'clock or whatever, that does create a lot of problems. They can't get the roads cleaned and, um, you know, especially if there's accidents and, and different things. So it does, it does pose them problems to try to keep the roads clean when there's more people on the road. So anyway, but. <clears throat>
<clears throat> well, and if you get Mark to agree to it, I don't. I mean, I don't think why you're going to get a hold of Mark. Vacation leave or. I, mean, I don't agree with them being able to take sick leave if you close the office. Why is it sick leave? Why are you able to take sick leave? A sick leave is more of a privilege, not a right. Um, that you know, it's it's not it's not personal. You know, it is, but it isn't. It's a benefit, but you use it when you have to. So, I mean, I don't know. That's the policy we have for every two hours that you're off. Well, I'm just asking, why would you be able to use sick leave, or why would it? matter. I mean, if you don't want to use vacation leave, obviously. If, There's some people that don't have vacation leave. There's some people that use vacation as soon as they get it. <coughs> so when it comes to a situation like this that they weren't expecting, there's people that don't have vacation leave. Fake a cough. <laughs> what are you going to do if they tell you, they see the snow and heart and they say, I don't think I feel well. I'm, I'm going to take sick leave and go home. Yeah, sick leave day. is not good for you know, this bad weather. It's, Well, then, I mean, I'd be fine with if they don't have vacation leave and they're worried about getting snowed in here and they don't have vacation leave time to take and they want to take sick leave, I don't care what they use what's Larry, as far as that goes. What, what's Larry say for, you know, he says this, this whether or not is very accurate, what are they saying for? Well, that's what I had talked to Larry about prior to coming in here. He, he was telling me exactly what they were saying. So, becomes so, modern, persistent from so, noon to 8 p.m., yep. half inch per hour. Yep. So, so and, and the, and his concern was the blowing winds too. So with, with, with the winds, you know, it's going to seem heavier than it is and it's going to be, the visibility is going to be harder, um, or poorer, I guess I should say, but <laughs> anyway, so. I don't care if we change the policy that if, I mean, even if we don't, you know, have a meeting and close up that they can use sick leave if they don't have vacation leave for it. I'm, I mean, I'm fine for that. I don't want to endanger them just because they don't have vacation leave to take. Some people have kids. I'm not attached to my kids that I got to stay home with them. So some people have to stay home. I don't. So there's some difference there too. I mean, they're, they're having to use up their annual leave and I don't necessarily see that as there, there is something too for people that do stay, the emergency ones that if everybody else, if you close, then we do owe them sick time. Or we owe them something. Owe them something for what? For actually working. When the other one That's why the other ones are having to take sick leave or annual <laughs> leave. <laughs> then I sure as hell ain't doing it. Because then it's going to cause that much more headache. I'd rather say you get. <laughs> Two snow days a year. Use them or lose them. Can I take those in July? <laughs> if you make it snow in July, we'll talk about it. You said snow days. You didn't say it had to snow. <laughs> you know, and I would be fine calling them personal days. I actually thought about that. that if we can't do raises or something to, you know, give an extra day off or something that, you know, have some value. That's not actually costing money. So, I don't know. That's a whole different discussion. But didn't we, we do, we don't still have one, one personal day, do we? Yes. We have one yeah. floating day. And you got Columbus Day back? Good Lord. A bunch of damn liberals getting all these days off. <laughs> <coughs> I want to stir the pot. It's snowing. I want to stir the pot. <coughs> Well, you want to wait and see what Debbie comes up with the policy. If man. we're going to have to give time and a half to people that stay here, then that or more sick leave, then I, I definitely am not against it. You can call Mark if you all. I don't know how you do. Yeah, that. I'm not going to bother Mark in London. So we should. We shouldn't let him have that easy. <laughs> we had to deal with Intrinsic Corp today. <laughs> you asked if I had any more questions. I was going to ask him if DevNet gave him his program for free if he would do it. I was like, no, I don't know. Should have anyway. They, uh, <laughs> I was going to say he's better one. The only thing I was going to say was their whole system is cut. I didn't buy 
anything. There wasn't anything. There was nothing existing. Period. It was built from scratch. And I don't think there's a five-year limit on this description. I think it's never ending. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure the original was five years, and then. You know, then they've got it built, and so there's going to be another subscription fee every year after that. Which, I don't know, is there a subscription fee and a maintenance fee, probably? No, it's all one. But the subscription fee, if you don't pay the fee, you don't have the, you don't have the maintenance. The software. Right. You, you lose the access to the software. I have a question. Yep. If I want to join the chamber under the county, that something that I personally pay? Well, we pay $150,000 a year. We ought to have as many members as we want. <laughs> well, I know Jim gets a membership every year, but he doesn't, he's not involved in those do anything. Is that just because he's the elected board? Yeah. Okay. Or just add you um, as a member. Okay. We shouldn't have to pay anything yeah. for us to be members of it. And I mean, if you're wanting to go to the different things like their um, Thursday afternoon things, where they do once a month, I have to sit there. shouldn't have to. Okay. See what they say. Okay. So, if the county commission chooses to close for the departments that remain open, we'll receive one hour of additional sick leave for every hour the county normal operation is suspended, up to eight hours. So the people that actually work is the ones that That don't make sense. They deserve something for having to stay versus the other Now, they should deserve home. something if the other people got to go home for free, but the other people going home get to if use sick leave. If you close, I ain't closing it. I'm going to tell you, I won't ever close. Free. I'm going to tell you right now, I won't ever close with this policy. And we may need to look at that policy. I'm not going to pay somebody double time to be here to work when somebody else is taking off work and having to leave time. They're getting double. triple time. Yeah, you are. You're paying them for being there. And then you're also giving them an hour of sick leave for every hour that they're there. So they're getting paid double. Sick is not paid unless you actually leave here with 10 years or more. <laughs> at a percent. Not a full ride. It's a, it's That's a why day sick off. Is used. It's a, I'm, I'm not doing it because of this but, weather. This <clears throat> but I mean, if they use the sick time, it's paid at the regular hourly rate, right? If they use it, yes. Right. I mean, yes. granted, a lot of people don't use it, but. I don't know. Well, you've probably had too much. <laughs> um, okay. But I would be willing to entertain if we want to look at this and say if you are going to leave because of inclement weather and you don't have vacation leave or maybe you don't want to use vacation leave for it, that you can use sick leave for that instance, I'd be fine with that. Because that's what it looks like it's coming down to now is if somebody wants to leave, they don't want to use their vacation leave, so they're going to come in and, and work. Well, that's, that's, I mean, that's not fair. Somebody actually used up their vacation time, so you're going to let them use sick time, but those that haven't used their vacation time have to use their vacation No, I'm not saying they have to. They can choose. If they want to just use sick leave, then they can. So anybody can use the sick leave? Yes, sir. I, that's what I meant. Okay. I'm sorry. I I like to bank my sick leave too because that's probably what's gonna you know right, be I around long enough for you. you. You say you can use the sick leave. What what if you have an employee that don't have any sick or vacation yet earned? That's a new employee. That that employee gets punished. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is we got okay. If you have, what do you get when you get sick leave? Is it the first six months you gotta wait? When do you actually start you getting? First month so the first month you're here, you're going to get eight hours. And say the first month they're here is in January, and then we're off two days, or they need to take off two days because of inclement weather. I guess basically they're going to owe us eight hours, and at the end of February they have zero hours of sick leave, and if they quit before then, then we just have to eat it. No, no, no. Nobody can go in the rent. I'll take it off their pay. Just close no. at 2.30. You're going to have an inch, inch and a half of, let's see, an inch and an hour, half an inch and an hour. Uh, there's already two inches. There'll be an inch and a half of snow, but it's not snowing now. So the roads will be fairly clean. They'll hit them all before it starts snowing. Well, I, I'd say that 
I mean, Jill's not here, but I'd say if you wanted to We wouldn't have to go by this inclement weather policy. Um, if you wanted to allow them to take sick leave and leave early, that we could do that. Um, and essential p people that stayed, you know, just got paid the regular pay. I mean, I'm sure some offices, are you going to close your entire office, Marvin? Yes, sir. I mean, that's, I mean, when I say essential personnel, I, I guess I'm thinking sheriff, EMS. juvenile really needs to stay open either other than they the people kids there well the people that have to watch the kids but yeah. i mean christy says she had people stand there at the doors this morning when she got there and she said she had a couple people a person with a couple kids or something well i can assure you that depending on how hard it's snowing and stuff that i'm gonna let my people go when i think it's not safe for them to are you going to stay at your office, or are you going to close your office completely, or what's your what's your plan? I normally stay as long as I can. So, so I just I mean it's not fair that one office gets to close and the other one's got to stay. Well, I want to be my, fair to everybody, that's and that's what I'm decision, you know? tossing in the air. But I'm not going to call it close the place up and then be paying people double time well, to work here. Oh, we deal with that, that all the time, and you we I mean you can do it, and LV can do it whether we close it or not and my business I can close it up too I can tell Kyle take your ass home go be safe or whatever or you know we well, can still that's work my right concern, and I think that should be your concern also is the safety of your employees I don't think there's an issue of safety right now I don't think it's a big deal it's not right now I don't think it's gonna be a big deal at two o'clock either I'll be out playing in it I can assure you I don't know okay no? I'm not inclined to. Not with this policy the way it's written. Well, do you want to change change it? I mean I'd we have the discretion. More discussion to do it. on that. Okay. I just today, you don't want to do you don't to want to do anything it. today. Okay. No, we've had worse than this and we didn't close up. Okay. I think everybody's crying wolf and screaming about the sky is falling because there's an apple to hit them in the head. I, and I may be wrong. If things get drastically bad, we can decide some at 2 o'clock. I'm not saying I won't at 2 o'clock say something if the roads okay. are treacherous. Okay. Okay. All right. You just need to get with the park and then let me know. You live you, in Russellville. You, when you going home? Though, you? Uh, my daughter's sick, and so I'm thinking I'm going yeah, yeah. I thought your mom okay. had teeth being well, pulled. Well, I canceled her teeth pulling because okay. I didn't want my eighty-year-old mother to fall. What's this? Off. What's this for? The health department said that you want to look at that thermometer. Oh, okay. Um, All right, my phone's blowing up. So anyway, I vote stand, or I move to stand in recess till four thirty. So moved. Our second. You got some? I just want to say that the um, county clerk's fees for January oh. are two thousand four hundred five. Okay. County clerk's fees. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All righty. Greg. Uh, this, okay. Hang on. Uh, motion to adjourn till 4:30. All those in favor? Aye. We're in recess. Or recess. Yes, yeah. Aye. <laughs> aye. Okay. We're adjourned. Uh, Sorry. What are we talking about out of session here? Well, it's something that's Chris and I've been emailing back for. Uh, oh, those. Oh.